First and Now is the official BC Lions podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, leave a review. We love those. It's Matt Baker and Nick Kowalski, as always, for the final time in 2023. What a year it's been. And on that front, we encourage you again, yeah, to subscribe, download. Plenty of great interviews this year. We have another one to wrap up the year with Ryan Phillips. But Nick, what's happening? I was going to say, this is episode 41 on the season. So I don't think any other CFL team is putting up 41 podcasts. 41 podcasts. This is number 41. Yeah, wow. I'm, in, I'm in charge of labeling them once I send them yeah. over to you. So that's, that's how I know that. But Yeah, I see the title of these once I put them through to the YouTube channel and and uh, to uh, Apple, Spotify, wherever you're listening. So yeah, 41. That's awesome. Yeah. We'll do at least that many this coming year, that's right? That's standard, yeah. Yeah. And again, included in that, uh, we were just recently again at the the Grey Cup in Hamilton, Lions Den, some great conversations with Sean White, Matthew Betts, Neil McAvoy. Um, very cool setup, and we hope to do that. Well, we will do that right here in Vancouver in November, but uh, plenty to talk about and plan before that. And uh, this is an exciting day. One of the more exciting days on the calendar is we get the calendar, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, the schedule has dropped. Uh, we might as well get into that, right? Um, the 70th season uh, for the BC Lions. We'll talk a bit about some signings and some coaching staff news we got this week. Ryan Phillips, as mentioned, will join us. A bit of an increased role for him on the staff. But uh, we're heading to Toronto to kick things off. And yeah, we might as well. Should we go through this game by game? We'll talk about some of yeah. our favorite cities, but... Um, it's all going to start for us, the final game of the opening week. I do love how it's a Grey Cup rematch, by the way. Montreal in Winnipeg on the Thursday to open it up. And we won't even be uh, heading to Toronto yet at that point, because again, we get the Sunday game. Lions and Argos, and uh, quite the eventful trip we had to Toronto in week four with uh, the Vernon Adams Jr. interceptions. Unfortunately, you can't talk about that game without bringing up that, even though it wasn't all his fault. Uh, we knew the Toronto Argonauts wound up being a juggernaut, even though they didn't advance to the Grey Cup game. But, you know, this is one, this was a Grey Cup matchup that a lot of people, I think, wanted to see. And maybe is it a preview? Way too early to talk about it, but a pretty uh, intriguing opening for this Lions squad. I mean, I, I it's only December 13th or 14th as of uh, we record this, but... Uh, I, I would say this could be qualified as a Grey Cup preview at this yeah. point. It's Toronto was sixteen and two last year. Obviously, got upset in the Eastern uh, Eastern final, and then we are right there with Winnipeg two in the Western final. So these are lining up to be two more juggernaut teams, and it's going to be an exciting Week One matchup. Look this up, Nikki. Uh, first time opening a season against the Argos uh, since way back in two thousand and seven. I like how it's different too. Yeah. It's not what you oh, expect. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, save some of these divisional matchups until it gets a little more crucial on the schedule. But um, yeah, two thousand seven uh, at what was then called the Rogers Center, or was it still Scott? Might have been the Rogers Center by that point. Yeah, um, and we all know that it's all about BMO Field now. So yeah, Sunday the 9th of June, 4 o'clock Pacific time. And then uh, we'll get on the plane, come home, and get ready for a home opener. And based on the precedent uh, Amar Doman, our owner, has set the last couple of years, might there be some cool entertainment? We think so. We don't know anything concrete yet. Uh, I'm loving this. Home opener against the Calgary Stampeders, Saturday, June 15th. One of five four o'clock starts at Save on Foods Field at BC Place. Big home opener, playoff rematch. Yeah, that's prime time too. Saturday at four o'clock. Thought that was a big hit last season. I mean, I sort of like beating the wheels off Edmonton the last two years, and the home opener is a little trying to change it up. <laughs> yeah, a bit. but yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll keep Alberta in the mix and yeah. uh, hopefully come out with another big bang and then the home opener. And here's what's interesting: um, one of only two meetings with Cal. Sorry, Calgary's going to come twice. Um, it, I, I will get to that eventually. It's a fully balanced schedule. It's only going to be Edmonton and Saskatchewan the Lions play twice, so apologies. Yeah, see, I'm, I haven't memorized this yet. Usually it takes me a while to memorize it. First of two trips to Vancouver by the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, we'll go to McMahon Stadium just the once like we did a year ago. But, um, yeah, big divisional test and uh, a chance to set the tone uh, from there. Uh, stop me if, if you've heard this before. Week three at Winnipeg. Our first of two trips to Manitoba, and uh, once again, they're the exact same weeks, starting in week three, only this time it's on a Friday, 5.30 Pacific, and you know the storylines will be huge again. 
Yeah, I mean, run that one back too, right? We know what happened in week three last year. We know what happened in the West Final last year, the last two years. So it's always going to be intense when these two teams meet and expect the same uh, on week three there. Yeah, um, be nice to set a tone uh, again like we did in, in 2023. And yeah, what else can we say? Uh, Winnipeg uh, is going to be the hurdle. It's going to be a very tough division again, but... Until someone knocks Winnipeg off, uh, you have to look at them as the measuring stick. And as we've seen, they've already hung on to a couple of key guys. Willie Jefferson's back. Um, Kenny Lawler's under contract for another year. And uh, he's gone for 200 against this Lions team before. So um, we have to make sure that doesn't happen again. Uh, week four, it's our only Thursday night at home of the season. You mentioned blowing the doors off Edmonton. While they only come once this year, we only go there once, as I was talking about. Elks at Lions, a Thursday night week four contest, 7 o'clock, June 27th. That's another thing that's different to me. I've never experienced a Thursday nighter. I'd be, oh, that's a lie. Hamilton, last in 2021. Yeah, we, yeah, we, our only Thursday night in 2023 at home was preseason. So in 2022, yeah. we played yeah, Hamilton. That's right. Pre- so that's a lie. But uh, Thursday's See, still we different. we both stubbed our toe here early. <laughs> that's fine. My point is, Thursday's a little different for, B- for being at BC Place. So I'm excited for that one. And then it also kind of sets up a little bit of a mini bye week following. Yeah. Uh, we get a weekend to kind of just chill and, and hang out. Because the following week, hey, you mentioned Hamilton. Yeah, we don't play until Sunday. One of, I think, four Sunday road games, including the opener like we talked about, Lions at Tiger Cats in week five. Yeah, the, sun, the Sundays is kind of the theme here, right? It, it is four on the road that we go to. And uh, I got to experience Hamilton as a as a employee for the first time last season uh, in week 18 or week 19 that we went there last year. And I love the stadium. So I'm excited to go back. It was a fun one. Uh, Great game, Walk-off win, a big defensive score by Josh Woods. Dane Evans coming in uh, and silencing his old fans. And yeah, uh, Hamilton's a good spot. And in the summertime, too, I mean, I think um, I think you'll appreciate it even more if you manage to, to get out a bit more and explore. If you're an outdoors guy, Hamilton's pretty good in the summer. So hmm. something to, to look forward to. Lions, Tiger Cats, and then a uh, pretty nice uh, thing of alternating home and away to start here. Saturday, July 13th, the lone visit from the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Perhaps another watermelon smash? Beat me to it. Yeah, <laughs> well, we'll see. Four o'clock, BC Place. Yeah, always a big deal when the Riders come in. That was a huge, hugely successful theme last season, so hoping it's back and... Uh and again, beat the wheels off the riders again. That's what we've been kind of doing the last two years. Well, I'm so. and I'm intrigued. Uh, Corey Mace has yeah, gotten the head be a coaching team, job yeah. there. Uh, we think where they're going to have a healthy Trevor Harris back at quarterback. I think I think they'll be in the discussion. Um, I mean, there's a lot of pressure there because two straight years of long losing streaks for the riders to end, and both times they ended up out of the playoffs. So uh, always fun when the riders come to town Saturday, July. The 13th, week seven, back on the road and another Sunday. Lions at Stampeders, lone visit to McMahon. A nice little streak at McMahon. Um, Four straight wins there, I think, in the regular season. 2021, twice in 2022, open 2023 with a victory there. So I have to keep that streak alive. Yeah, it's, it's always been fun when we go to Calgary the last couple of years. You think of that overtime and comeback wins in 2022. We also go there in preseason as well for the first yes. game of preseason. So Saturday, the 25th of May, mm-hmm. 1 o'clock Pacific. Yep, so uh, Calgary is one of my top cities. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that one. And uh, we'll be looking to go out strong before our first bye of the year comes in Week 8. So no game in Week 8. Flashing forward to Week 9 and once again... In Winnipeg, Thursday. So, um, yeah, the week nine trip to start August in Winnipeg this past season didn't go as planned. Uh, 50 to 14 loss. I kind of missed an opportunity to really create some distance, but uh, another two trip season to Winnipeg. Yippee. <laughs> it's, it's kind of ironic that we have a buy before that one, too, based off uh, the schedule last year and how that all played out. So, yeah. Hoping that one's a little more, a little more balanced this season. So that's a Thursday, August the 1st, which means we get to enjoy BC Day Long Weekend at home before uh, another road trip. This begins a stretch, Nikki, of three straight on the road. Very crucial stretch. Sunday, August 11th, Lions at the Elks. Only trip to Commonwealth this year. And um, 
we expect Edmonton to be an improved team. For sure. The whole division's going to be improved, right, based on what we saw last season. And it's another Sunday game. It's, hopefully the crowds are better there. I expect them to be this season. So should be a good atmosphere out in, out in Edmonton. I guess I should correct myself. That Winnipeg trip, the second of three straight on the road. Uh, we talked about visiting Calgary. So three straight road games with a bye sandwiched in there. And then um, we'll be back at home Sunday the 18th. We'll be done with Winnipeg. Three meetings all finished on August 18th. Sunday, the lone Sunday at home, 4 o'clock, Winnipeg in town. And um, yeah, had quite the entertaining home game against them this past year. We won't revisit that whole thing. But, um, you know, if you can get this season series this time with the Bombers, perhaps get a split in Winnipeg, win the home game, should set us up well for uh, the second half of the year. Exactly. We saw it last season on, on how important that third meeting with Winnipeg was here at BC Place and how important, it, how hyped it was going into the game and how important the result ended up being uh, in the playoffs, right? So it's going to be huge. It always is huge to get the tiebreaker over a divisional opponent, but August 18th, of, I'm calling it now, it's, it's shaping up to be a massive game in, in terms of the, the, the West standings. Massive, yes, would be right. Uh, Lions did not visit Ottawa in 2022. I was not, or 2023, sorry. I was not a fan of that. Again, it's a fully balanced schedule. We go everywhere, host everybody. Lions at Red Black, Saturday, August 24th, four o'clock our time, Pacific time. Leading into touchdown Pacific, uh, cool little home and home here. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I like going to Ottawa too. It's going to be fun to go there, especially that we didn't go last year. Love the balance schedule this year. And uh, I think another factor is that it makes it makes the touchdown uh, Pacific trip the following week fair. Both teams play yeah. in the exact same situation. So A week makes, in between yeah, the games. Makes yep. it fair. So Saturday, August 31st, Royal Athletic Park. Very much looking forward to seeing the completion of that temporary venue, the new turf. We toured it a couple of weeks ago. Home of the Victoria Harbor Cats baseball. Uh, Lions Red Blacks uh, in the Lions neutral site extravaganza. This is going to be fantastic and a great way to kick off Labor Day weekend. Yep, L- Labor Day. That just adds another wrinkle to it. We talked about this in the last podcast, but that's that's game of the year territory just for all the events that are going to be based around it and the excitement of, of playing in Victoria. Reminder, if you're a BC Lions season ticket member, uh, you get dibs on your tickets for Touchdown Pacific. Uh, if you prefer not to opt in, uh, no sweat. Uh, you can put that towards a playoff or a Grey Cup ticket. So uh, everybody's going to win in this situation. And, and I've, I've got some friends, uh, some people I know on the island who are asking me, how do I get tickets? How do I get tickets? Well, become a Lions season ticket member is probably the best way. Not sure how many comps uh, we're going to get outside of our own two tickets. But um, this is going to be a special event. And uh, we look forward to... A sort of uh, announcing as we go along here, I'm sure there'll be some cool festival type announcements, maybe some entertainment, who knows. But at the end of the day, it's a meaningful game in the standings. And uh, from a football perspective, the team will have to be mindful of that. No buy after this. So uh, we go to Montreal Friday, September the 6th. Uh, you know how I feel about Montreal in, in my city rankings, which we'll get to perhaps in a couple of minutes. Lions at Alouettes, our first look at the defending Grey Cup champions, 4.30 on the 6th of September. First uh, post-Labor Day uh, starts no more Thursdays or Sundays. So Friday night to kick off week 14. Bit of deja vu there for me too. These three years I've been here now, it's it's been going around that September first to September sixth yeah. range. It you was go, Labor go, Day yeah. weekend this past year. Yeah, yeah. we go to Montreal, yeah. so it feels like every time September rolls around, we head to Montreal, and that's that's fine with me. It's good, great weather there too. So, got the sunlight going down right during uh, individual warm ups. It's it's great. Go to Stogie's Cigar Bar again, perhaps on uh, Thursday night. See where the see where the chips fall. Yeah. Love Montreal, absolutely. Back home uh, Friday the 13th, a uh, good stretch of Fridays here. Um, for this Lions team, this is a big stretch, Nick. Three home games in a row with a bye week to follow in there as well. Sorry. So a very important post-Labor Day stretch. We have some home games. Argonauts did not visit in 2023. They're here on Friday, September 13th, 2024. Yeah, and based off how that last week four meeting, which at the time was will, will be the last time we played Toronto, uh, ended. Uh, I know a lot of conversations I had with, with players, fans, everybody was saying, we want to have, we, we need Toronto again. We need to play them again. We need that revenge factor to it. And we need them to come over to, 
to BC place and show them how we protect our house kind of thing and, and do that on or perform at home and all that. So uh, if, if we expect the Toronto to be as good as they were last season, uh, this game's going to be played after Labor Day. You know how we know what they say about games played after Labor Day and how much more important they get. And this one should be that should be all that uh, in September. From there, it's uh, that's a seven o'clock start, by the way. But then from there, bye week number two, and then we're home uh, Friday the twenty seventh. Have a hunch this is going to be our truth and reconciliation orange shirt day game would be the fourth annual again full game themes to come before we head to training camp hopefully uh early in 2024 tiger cats at lions uh congrats a bladed congrats to our our friend ed hervey officially named gm in hamilton as they reshuffle the deck a little bit scott milanovich the head coach with uh, orlando steinauer staying on in a senior management role Hamilton, uh, yeah, a lot of questions again with the Tie Cats. Who's going to be playing quarterback like us, uh, like everyone else? Uh, they have some important free agency decisions, guys to hang on to, guys that they'll lose, but uh, a cat fight to close out September. Yeah, and like you said, it's going to be tough to even predict what's going to happen with the Tiger Cats heading into this season. So that's going to be exciting, the kind of the unknown factor. Uh, who knows where they'll be at and at the end of September too. So this one could be a very important game. You know, Hamilton over this past decade has stayed quite competitive. So that'll be exciting. And then I'm just looking at the schedule now here too, right in front of me, that, that's there's four Fridays in a row at this point. This would be the third one. Yeah. The Montreal game starts off that Friday night stretch. So a lot, a lot of Friday nights uh, coming up in, in the in the fall. And note the start time of 7.30 and uh, the third home game of this stretch, this four-week stretch where we don't have to get on a plane. Third and final meeting with Calgary Friday, October the 4th. That's uh, based on the calendar. Maybe is that a gravy bowl opportunity? We don't know. We know it's Thanksgiving weekend. Third and final meeting again. We talked about the importance of the season series with Winnipeg. If we can win it again against Calgary, should set ourselves up nicely. This uh, will be a big one. I have a hunch. I think there's a bit of a revenge factor in this game too. You, and you probably think I'm at first glance you say, "Oh, what do you mean? We beat them in the playoffs the last two years." But the past two seasons, Calgary's come here toward the end of the year. In 2022, they came at the end of September, and uh, obviously last year they came the final game of the season. And Calgary got quite convincing wins in both of those yeah. games, right? So I think I think there's a revenge factor to to beat Calgary in the regular season at home because they've came in here twice the last two seasons, like I said, and beat us pretty bad. So got to change that up uh, in the fall here. Yeah, Vernon's first home game in 2022, right? Uh, second end of a home and home, and yeah, uh, final game of the year for us this past season. The Stampeders were a desperate team, but that's no excuse. Uh, you know that Lions team was not uh, happy with how uh, they ended the regular season and thankfully used a bye week and a long week of prep to to win when it mattered. Friday, October 4th, and then from there we go uh, Saturday the 12th. Always a highlight for us, Nick. Sadly, we only do it once in the regular season. Lions at Rough Riders, 4 o'clock Pacific time. Uh, Mosaic Stadium, Regina, enough said. We love it. Victoria's Tavern, here we come, baby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the one thing that immediately when I saw the timing of this game, October, it'll be an evening game. They got. They, I hope they did that blackout for us. I love I love why. Yeah. I'm, I've never been to a game in Saskatchewan where they do that blackout pregame. Um, and I think they even turn the lights off during the, during the commercial breaks like how we do in the fall here too. But... I, I've always watched those games on TV and been jealous of it. The bring them out, the whole entrance for the riders is a top of my list personally. And uh, to see that with the lights out, I think would be fantastic in person. And just the, the energy pregame in, in Mosaic is different. I lo- it's one of my favorite moments of the season especially, to capture. Yeah, and yeah. especially this, yeah, this point of the year, yeah. um, you know, both these teams are going to have heavy playoff implications, uh, you think, in mid-October. So That too, yeah. Yes, and unfortunately, we only go there the one time, but that's okay. Uh, We want to host them, perhaps, in November. And all of a sudden, we're at our regular season finale, Saturday, October the 19th, because, once again, we have a bye to wrap up the regular season. Defending Grey Cup champion uh, Montreal Alouettes, 4 o'clock start or final uh, home 4 o'clock start of the regular season is the last game of the year, and uh, what's at stake? Are we clinching first place with the win do we have to win to keep our first place hopes alive a lot of possibilities which you don't have to dive into yet but again with the alouettes they're looking to run it back uh, they've also re-signed tyson philpot in the past couple of days nick uh, great cup hero great local guy son of a lion legend and Corey. 
And uh, our first look at the defending Grey Cup champions at home here is the last game. Yeah, they've been they've been busy lately these past two weeks, and I don't blame them. Obviously, they're, they're coming off quite a quite a run in the playoffs and a championship season, so uh, there could be talks about this one being a Grey Cup preview right before the season Never ends know. and goes to the playoffs. And to meant to one last thing I like to add is that that week twenty one buy, I'm jacked for that too. I think on and mm-hmm. off the field that benefited everybody last season. It was great to have heading into the playoffs, and hope it's the exact same situation here. Could or or having two buys in a row now with getting first place possibly. Yeah, it was a good compromise this this time around. Uh, there was a bit they there was a bit of practice toward the end of the week. A couple of light practices, a uh, practice some situational uh, elements. So. Um, it worked out uh, from a schedule wise. Yeah, you needed a break from the day to day grind at that point. Allow some guys to heal up. So you have to use it to your advantage if it falls your way. What's interesting though is three teams are on a buy at the end this week. It's just the Lions this time, just us. There will be four games in week 21. So um, always intriguing. Uh, Winnipeg goes to Montreal. That's interesting. The Grey Cup rematch is bookended first week. Last week, Calgary's at Saskatchewan at, at Sask to end. Could be some heavy implications there. You never know. Toronto and Edmonton, Hamilton in Ottawa. So hopefully, all of those games mean something. And and hopefully, from a Lions perspective, uh, it's just waiting to see who's going to meet in the West semifinal if uh, can lock up first place. But Saturday playoff games too. Yep, Saturday playoff games. Money uh, again and. Um, all roads lead back to BC Place, the 111th Grey Cup, Sunday, November the 17th. And uh, let's hope we're there as a participant. And it's a busy Grey Cup week downtown Vancouver, practicing at BC Place, doing it all. So there you have it, uh, 70th season. And uh, we're excited to to honor our history in some form. Uh, I'd imagine that would be one of the heavy game themes we announce at some point. Uh, don't really have any details right now, but... Uh, before we talk to Ryan Phillips about uh, his return and his appointment uh, as assistant head coach, uh, let's uh, let's kind of continue down the path. Uh, the top three cities you want to get into, Nick? The top three working cities? I think, yeah, because there's, there's, there's quite a distinction, right? If you're a fan, if you're right. an employee. When it comes to working, though, I would say my top three I have listed. Saskatchewan definitely makes the cut. Uh, yep. The stadium's great. Yeah. Um, I, I like going there for one night, to be honest. I think the little area we're in is great for, for one evening. It's all, yeah. Vicks, uh, talked about exactly, Vicks Tavern. Exactly, yeah, Victoria's right? da- uh, And then Tor- Toronto and Hamilton. Hamilton, I, I, I said la- that uh, ha- last year was my first game in mm-hmm. Hamilton, and I, I loved it. Um, one thing these three stadiums have all in common, too, for me when it comes to Toronto, Hamilton, Saskatchewan, being my top three, is that they all have nice little tunnels where the, yeah. the guys walk into, so I love getting that shot. Uh, Saskatchewan has that same sideline thing or their different sideline aspect to it too. So that's a little different. I enjoy having that time to time, but those, those are probably my top three, Saskatchewan, Toronto, and Hamilton, but excited to go to all eight this season. Yeah. Uh, as far as working goes, it's, it's not as much that goes into it for me. I mean, I'm on the sidelines and post game writing a story and, and helping with, uh, interviews. Um, I suppose, Cal- remember Calgary? They gave us that whole photographer room. For yeah, we a get a room. Yeah, we get a room in Calgary. We get a room but in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan's too. great. Toronto's great. We get showers uh, in Saskatchewan. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we exactly. We get a whole uh, locker room. So yeah, and I, I'm with you there. Toronto, Hamilton, uh, f- three favorite cities to travel to for me. Montreal. I'm saying Ottawa just because we didn't go there last year. Saskatchewan, remarkable, and always love Calgary. So I gave you four. Um, you pretty much have the same ones. My, my hot take though is I'd throw Calgary there instead of Montreal. I think I think the, I like the area here in Calgary. Everything's kind of walkable. Yeah, uh, good area downtown. I like the stadium too. Um, I, it's not that far away. It's a nice little bus ride. So uh, all of that considered, I, I like going to Calgary. It's always just, it always just feels a there's, little more like intense when you go to Calgary. Yeah, uh, th- there's pros and cons to all these. Montreal is a great place, but it's a five hour flight. Uh, Cal- Calgary is a great place and it's a short flight and um, yeah, Ottawa, same thing. Uh, we go to these cities for one, two days. It's a pretty long time uh, to be on a plane there and back. So um, there you go. Uh, you can read between the lines. Uh, we've mentioned the places we like the most. There's a few places we haven't mentioned and and that <laughs> is what it is. Uh, favorite games back to this schedule. Uh, what games do you like on this schedule? 
Oh, I'm going with kind of the two obvious ones here. The season opener at Toronto was one that stands out for the road game for yeah. everything we just talked about going to Toronto. Uh, playing the Argos again after that, uh, the last time we played them, I think is going to be a huge storyline. And I know Vernon and the guys are going to be fired up to, to avenge that whole storyline. And then I touched on Pacific to me. I mean, how can you not pick it? That's, yeah. that's my home game. I, I, can't, I can't wait to go to Victoria. I think it's going to be a remarkable week uh, and just all the things that are going to go around. So those are the two that stand out to me. Uh, standing out for me, uh, again, Ottawa, August 24th, the, yeah, the touchdown Pacific angle and, and the fact that we're going there after two years. Remember our last trip there, Nathan Rourke had the long touchdown run when it looked like the offense was, was, uh, struggling to start. Josh Pearson made a big catch to keep that drive alive. And then Nathan ran it around, uh, the left side, I think it was. And, um, Tim Bonner had two sacks in that yeah. one. And Ottawa's we a great a weird city. Memory like that. <laughs> it's okay. You you uh, you compile the information. That's good. And home game, I'll go August eighteenth. I guess it is Winnipeg, just because we think the stakes might be high. Again, it's the third meeting before we're even done August. So, um, yeah, let's avenge that gravy bowl. Yeah, a lot, a lot of big ones coming up, and it's going to be an exciting season. Become a season ticket holder and uh, you'll have first rights to Touchdown Pacific, uh, the 111th Grey Cup. Holiday packs are on sale. Uh, we encourage everyone to to head to bclions.com uh, for all of your ticketing info. The 70th season promises to be a great one. All right, uh, we'll talk a bit about a couple of players' transactions before we're done here on First and Now, but we're going to bring in defensive coordinator and assistant head coach Ryan Phillips. A little football talk, perhaps I get his thoughts on the schedule. Not sure how uh, much he's reviewed it yet, uh, but entering his 16th season with the organization, so he knows all the ins and outs of all these CFL markets. RP, coming up. And off we go to Seattle now, just down the I-5. BC Lions defensive co coordinator and assistant head coach Ryan Phillips with us. Uh, RP, uh, first off, uh, best of the season to you. And was never a doubt, but welcome back. <laughs> no, I'm definitely uh, excited to be back. Um, you know, it's second home for me. So, you know, to be anywhere else, it doesn't even seem right. So, you know, definitely excited about the opportunity we're going to have this year and you know, I'm definitely looking for big things coming 2024. Yeah, I, I tallied this up, including your time as a player. This will be, I think, year 16 with the organization. Uh, where's the time go? Man, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's actually, you know, one refreshing to be, you know, in a stable situation like this, right? I mean, it's kind of unheard of to be with an organization this long, but, you know, the times that makes me actually reflect on it is like now see how old little Ryan is, right? He's 17 years old and he was born into this, you know, uh, organization. So, you know, for me, it's just one of those deals where I look at him now, he's getting ready to graduate high school and, you know, he was born in 2006 in my second year. And now to see him, you know, this old and, this, you know, at this age, now it lets me, you know, when I look back at past pictures, I'm like, dang, you know, he's in the stadium, you know, in the old stadium. And, you know, when I'm playing with G Roy and all these old names and things like that. So, you know, it's actually refreshing. It's actually, you know, pretty nice to know that, you know, you've been a part of an organization that's been building with you and you've been helping uh, build the organization as well. Yeah, just to give Nick some perspective here. So, you know, now we see we see TJ's kids in the locker room post game. We see Xavius, VA's little guy. Uh, holding court down there. That used to be Ryan's kids. That's how long he's been doing this. So so time does fly, yeah. yeah. No, for sure. And actually, you know what? Their kid's actually pretty, you know, good. They're better than mine. You know, Ryan was the, the kid that, you know, was having on Lule's helmet, somebody else's gloves, somebody else's cleats, and then lose them. And now I got to owe somebody something. So they're actually pretty, you know, pretty good kids at that stint. So, you know, yeah. they're definitely better than mine for sure. Well, we were even saying during media uh, pressers this year after home games, Xavius up, up on the stage with Vernon's kid didn't say a word the, like the entire season, really. It was pretty crazy to when you really consider that all. No, um, he's definitely good. <laughs> but uh, fast forwarding to the present day RP, um, congratulations, of course, on adding the uh, title of assistant head coach. Um, coach Rick on Monday in his, in his media availability pretty much said that your actual role will remain the same. But are there any th little things or even big things that you're uh, you're planning to add to your plate to this season just so you can fulfill that assistant head coach role? Or is it literally going to be the same role? 
I mean, literally it'll be the same role in the sense of obviously, you know, my, my thought process and my approach to, you know, this year would definitely be the defensive coordinator, but, you know, for me, it's definitely being able to try to be a sponge as best as possible. Um, you know, in, in regards to some of the roles and some of the duties that Rick upholds, um, the best thing for me that I could try to do is one, be an asset, you know, try to alleviate some of the, you know, things that might be on his plate if I can, um, you know, some of those things I kind of feel like I do now in a sense of, you know, being in tune with the team. And when I say with the team, I mean the offense and defense, you know, I'm not a guy that just, you know, only coaches or just only has a relationship with the defensive side of the ball. So, you know, the biggest thing for me is to try to be an asset as best as possible for him to alleviate some of the things off his plate, but also, you know, try to learn and try to be a sponge as best as possible to try to be groomed and something that I want to do futuristically in regards to being a head coach. So, you know, those are the things I want to be able to do in the off season, but during the season it's definitely going to be a defensive coordinator and, you know, try to help out as best as possible and try to make sure, you know, we're on a, on a good page as far as building towards a, a great cup run. When it comes to the defense specifically, RP, um, something you verbally emphasized throughout the season was being a dictating defense, right? Is, is that a message that you kind of want to convey over seasons, or does that change from season to season in terms of what you're actually telling the guys, or does it get tweaked at all even? No, I mean, the approach is going to be the same, right, as far as the mindset, right? You want to be a dictating defense. You want to be aggressive. You want to do what's necessary to, uh, you know, win games and dictate games, right? Um, however you can affect the quarterback and things like that, those things stay stay consistent. Um, some of your approaches to that may change, though, and sometimes that's based off the personnel, guys you have in the locker room and, and things like that. So the mindset is still the same, but, you know, the personnel changes, so your approach and schematics might differ. But other than that, you know, we want to go out there and be aggressive and dictate, you know, and make sure that these teams play left-handed or, you know, whatever it is, opposite of what their strength is as best as possible. Uh, we've talked uh, a lot about some of the the success the defense had, particularly early on uh, with the two shutouts. But our first chance to speak with you, I think, uh, since Matthew Betts collected his well-deserved hardware, most outstanding defensive player. Um, how much of a pleasure was that for you uh, to be a part of his chapter this past season? Man, you know what? Anytime you got an opportunity to see someone grow, right, and be able to, you know, start fulfilling their potential was huge, right? Um, I mean, I was a guy that was similar like that to that extent, you know, didn't win an award or anything like that. But, you know, to see a guy come from, you know, being a young guy to now taking that next step, whether it's leadership-wise, starting to fill up the stats, but also, you know what I'm saying, being a guy that every offensive team has to now, you know, identify, you know, that's definitely huge in that sense. So, you know, to see them go from where he was in Edmonton to now, you know, that first year with us was already big steps. But now from where he is now, like I said, he's an identified man and a, a guy that's, you know, every offense has to account for, you know, have to take into their scheme and, you know, have to make sure that they adjust their blocking scheme towards. So I'm excited for him. You know, I was definitely happy to see him get the award. It was definitely well-deserved. Um, I felt like he earned it. He worked for it. Um, you know, he had a good uh, coach in Bowman, you know, to put him in position to perfect his craft as best as possible. And he still got room to grow. You know, I feel like, you know, he still got things that he can continuously improve on. And I think, you know, saying this might not only be the first time that he wins a award like that, to be honest. Coach Rick uh, has used the word continuity over and over, particularly with the coaching staff. And you see it with the roster, too. But uh, looking at the defense with guys like Betts and Menard, Sioni now, TJ, Gary, Rugamba, Sales, guys who have been here, how much of that continuity has played an important role in how this defense has developed? Well, I mean, you know, the expectation remains the same there, right? When you have that type of continuity, everybody understands what the expectation and the standard has to be. Um, so those are guys that can actually control the locker room, right? They alleviate pressure and alleviate tasks for coaches in that sense, right? So you can leave those guys in the meeting room, you know, and let those guys lead the room and, you know, make sure that things are, you know, in detail, you know, how you want things to be delivered, how you want things to be approached. So those are huge things in that sense. So, you know, for me to be able to rely on TJ and GP and sales is huge, right? You know, defensively, you know, from that standpoint, it makes us a little bit better. And we also, you know, get away from the same redundant voice. You know, after a while, you got to understand you know, everybody doesn't want to hear your coach's voice all the time. So sometimes you got to move out the way and say, hey, TJ, you go ahead and say this or, you know, somebody else say that. So that way the delivery is different. So it's huge in that sense. And I think it establishes great, you know, standard and establishes a great expectation. Um, I was a part of that in the beginning part of my career. And I seen, you know, what it developed for our, uh, you know, throughout my tenure. So, you know, we want to be able to establish that and it's got us to, you know, one game before the uh, Grey Cup and hopefully it gets us over the hump, you know, in this coming year. 
And on that note about the Grey Cup, it's it's obviously a big year ahead with the Grey Cup being in Vancouver. Uh, but you were obviously a member of the 2011 team, the last uh, BC Lions home team to get it done on home field. Uh, when you when you think about that going back to 2011, what are what are one to two memories that you may even want to like tell the team this year that that uh, motivates them to get back to that spot? I would tell them honestly, I mean, it's one thing to win the Grey Cup, right? And it's a monumental, you know what I'm saying, stage and part of your career. And, um, you know, it's, it's definitely hard to win, you know, despite it only being nine teams, you know, it's it's a hard task to, you know, to win. You know, even with Winnipeg getting there four years straight, you know, they have also showed how hard it is to actually, you know, hoist the cup. So it's a big thing. But there's nothing like winning it at home. Like, I was fortunate enough to win two great cups um, from that standpoint. And I remember, you know, 2006, like yesterday, and it was the first time winning, but 2011 seems like, you know what I'm saying? Something that is beyond historical, you know, you get to celebrate with your home fans, you know, the week leading up to all the events, um, your family gets to be there. I mean, it's just, there's nothing like it. And it's a, a, a once in a lifetime type deal. And um, it's something that, you know, so I feel like, you know, if you have the opportunity, man, you got to seize the moments to experience. So, you know, I would talk about the memories of mine, you know, something that they can look forward to, you know, times have changed in a sense that it probably be even greater than what it was in 2011. And, you know, it's something I want those guys to be able to experience and they, you know, have to work and earn the right. And I feel like we have the team to do so as long as we get some guys back and, you know, maybe, you know, reinvent the wheel a little bit. But outside of that, you know, we'll make sure that, you know, we put ourselves in a position to make that run and it'll be memorable if we get the job done. Uh, one other topic we're, we're touching on on the podcast today, RP, is, is the schedule came out uh, today. So on that note, I, I want to ask you, you, you've been to uh, these eight other Canadian cities a lot over, over your time in the CFL. W- what are your favorite cities to travel to uh, on the road? Oh, now some of the cities outside of, you know, the stadiums and the, and the atmosphere of the games are a little bit different, you know. So, for instance, like, you know, throughout my playing career, SAS was my favorite place to go, right? Not just based on the success, but the atmosphere, the environment, um, you know, just the rivalry games that we had. A lot of the games that we played was, you know, for divisional, uh, you know, playoff position and things like that. So those were the bigger stages. As far as traveling wise, honestly, I love going to Montreal. Uh, Montreal is just a fun place to me. Um, you know, I – they have, you know, a different style of, you know, food, a different style of, you know, just people in general. Um, you know, the walking around aspect, being able to walk down certain streets and kind of get the environment and take it all in is huge in that sense, right? So it's nice as far as that goes. Toronto is also a nice place as well uh, when it's not as cold, and that's basically both places. So, you know, that's kind of how that is. But Toronto has its, you know, benefits too. So, you know, those would be the big, you know, the better of the two as far as it is for me. But Montreal will probably be top of the charts outside being at home in Vancouver. Yeah, Montreal, you can't go wrong. We're just we're not there long enough. That's the only that's the only downfall. That's probably a good thing. That's as a coach, that's probably a good thing. We're we're just in the day before, and it's almost dinner time. But you, you probably, as a coach, you like that part of it more, right? It depends. I mean, I, I'll take a little bit more days, a couple more, di- you know, a couple more hours in Montreal. It's okay. You know, back in the day was, you know, honestly better, you know, because, you know, we would go two and a half days before, right? Yeah. We'd catch that late one, get in, you know, around 11 o'clock at night had the next full day and then play the game, especially if it was night game, we would stay overnight again. You know, when that was back when we didn't have charters. So, you know, the per diem was a little bit better for sure. But even outside of that, you know, you got the two and a half, three days. So it was fun and exciting. But, you know, charters, I understand, you know, for the benefit of, you know, getting guys back and things like that. So, but I would definitely love to take a couple more hours if I could get it for sure. Just don't, uh, just don't go to bed after the game. If you have to get up at five in the morning anyway, right? Not a bad city to do it. Hey, uh, we're also going to Victoria this season. Uh, I know you're probably excited about that. Not sure if in your uh, in your days uh, helping out the community relations, if you ever got to Vancouver Island, but uh, how much are you looking forward to uh, a cool setting? Uh, Nick and I saw it. It's not built yet, but neutral site game, touchdown Pacific. How cool is that? Man, it's cool, man. You know, I used to, you know, get on the CFL at times, you know, people that I know over there about the fact that we never got to, you know, play a touchdown Atlantic and, you know, we never got to be a part of that as an organization. And, you know, for them to bring that over here, I think it's definitely huge, right? You're tapping into a different demographic. Uh, you're tapping into a different fan base as far as that goes. And, you know, you're definitely shedding some light on a different, you know, area that, you know, British Columbia has to offer. And I think that's, you know, fascinating um, within that sense. So, you know, definitely excited about that. I've been over there a couple of times. You know, I've even seen, you know, when they had the little uh, junior teams over there, you know, the, the, the VI Raiders and things like that. So, you know, I've seen the game or two, you know, over there. So, you know, definitely excited about what, you know, the city is going to bring and, you know, what everything that the CFL is going to do over there. 
I think it's going to be huge. I think it's going to be a step in the right direction. And, you know, I think, you know, they're definitely going to show out and, you know, we're going to make it memorable and, you know, obviously try to go get a win. But I think it's definitely going to, you know, set some uh, some nice things for the future, you know, as far as what, Van, what Van, uh, Vancouver Island can uh, bring. Well said. Um, and then lastly, for me, um, the offseason uh, preparation, uh, the retooling uh, of the roster, that's already started with Neil, Rick, and everybody else. Uh, how involved in you uh, would you be with that? I mean, surely once we get to free agency, they'll be getting your thoughts on potential guys they want to target, guys we want to prioritize resigning. What's that like for you? Man, and, you know, that started as soon as the season ended. Um, you know, when you're, you know, going through an assessment of guys and, you know, you're trying to, you know, understand more, you know, areas that maybe you need to be better, um, you know, areas that, you know, I even need to be better as far as a coordinator. I think it goes hand in hand, right? You know, an evaluation process is for everybody. And, you know, we need to be able to fine tune the things that put our players in a position to, to be successful, but also make sure we have the players that can, you know, go ahead and execute at a high level. And, um, you know, we're trying to find a way to get, get past the next step, right? The next step is for us to actually get to the cup. And, um, you know, we've been able to come very close and, you know, we've been kind of, you know, in the same dynamic the last two years uh, against the same team. But, you know, at the end of the day, we got to make sure that we're putting our players in a position to be successful and get the players that's going to make us, you know, take that next step forward. So, I'm a part of the process as best as possible. You know, I make sure that, you know, my perspective evaluation is on, you know, as best as as, as it could be um, as far as, you know, how I outlook things. And, you know, I'm going to be in tune as far as our resignings and, you know, saying free agency. And, you know, we want to put out our best 2024, you know, team out there. So that way, you know, we can go ahead and do what we need to do on the home field. Well said. Uh, hey, we were just saying before we hit record how time flies and everything. And uh, before we know it, we'll be, We'll be having breakfast uh, in Kamloops, Nick's favorite breakfast, ba- <laughs> uh, bacon, eggs, a little bit of cereal, a smoothie perhaps on a hot day. So it's coming, man. It's 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 12 days before Christmas now, but believe me, it's coming. Uh, speaking of which, all the best to you uh, and yours, and we'll look forward to doing more of this in 2024. No, for sure. I appreciate it. And I appreciate what you guys are doing, man. Like I said, man, you guys take the time out to make this, you know, what it is. And, you know, for fans to be able to in tune, you know, and get, you know, down into the perspective of coaches and players, I think sometimes gets missed right throughout other media mm-hmm. and you open up a platform for that. So, you know, definitely kudos to you guys, man, for what you guys do. I think it's admirable. And, you know, at the end of the day, like you said, Camus is coming fast and you know, we'll be dialed in, ready to go, and I'm pretty sure the expectation will be high within the room starting and outside of the room with the fan base, and it's going to be, you know, definitely lined up and ready to go. Yeah, i got to get to Shark Club up there, too. Can't forget Shark For Club. For sure. Yes, it's a must. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Happy holidays, Ryan. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. You too. Appreciate it. Ryan Phillips, uh, love talking to the man. Always have uh, as a player when I was working uh, in another job and another – Building sports radio, the funny station, as Donnie and Dolly call it. Anyway, um, can talk football with him all day. And that's a guy, again, we've talked a bit about Corey Mace. I mean, RP's in that wave. These young, bright coordinators who are probably on track to a head coaching job at some point before all's said and done. Yeah, and RP definitely brings a swagger to the team, right? And he's he's someone yep. that's very well respected throughout Every positional group, so excited to have him back, but also the entire staff too, right? And that includes uh, Rick Campbell, co-general manager, head coach, back for year five, season four, hired in 2019. He was hired in a whole other decade, Nick. That's how long he's been around. Uh, Of course, uh, there was no 2020 CFL season, but uh, 29 and 21 uh, needs two wins to catch Dave Ritchie for sixth on the all-time win list and four to catch Mike Benavides, his current special teams coordinator. So Rick Campbell uh, continues to climb the charts. Yep, and uh, like you said, continuity with the staff too, right? Uh, RP now in his fifth season as a coach, and Jordan Maximic in his fourth, so when it comes to seasons. So both of those coordinators have been around for some years now, and it's it's very important to, to obviously get everybody back. Yep. And uh, it's rare that you have uh, the same staff back together for back-to-back years in the cutthroat world of professional football. Uh, Player transaction-wise, a little quiet from a Lion perspective, and and that's okay. Uh, There's still 
Still about eight weeks, I suppose, until uh, it starts getting really nitty gritty as far as free agency. But uh, an important piece of the special teams and linebacker depth, Maxime Royer, global linebacker, signing a two-year extension, uh, six special teams tackles in 12 games. That's another guy who persevered through injuries. But that's one that might not jump off the page to the average fan, the average viewer, but an important guy to be keeping around. For sure, and he's very well liked in the locker room too. Very friendly guy. We had him on uh, one of our On Tap shows this year too. And Rivers got, Reach in yeah, the US, US, baby. So, uh, always happy to, to see Max around. He's always got a smile on his face and happy to have him back. The special teams demon, as Moj calls him, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, he dropped that one once or twice on the show. Couple. Yeah, yeah, at least, yeah. <laughs> uh, give or take about 21 free agents uh, remaining. Uh, that's the norm, but... You know uh, Neil and Rick and everybody, Ryan Rigmaiden, are going to prioritize uh, who they want and, and then take it from there as far as retooling the roster for 2024. A couple of more minutes uh, on our 41st and final episode of the 2023 calendar year. I saw the first draft of the Arrow Up recap for June. It is outstanding. Very passionate, very passionate stuff. Other than that, Nick, what do we have to re- to promote uh, as far as videos coming? Well, just a reminder that it's coming. It's January 1st. We're going to be launching these. Uh, there's going to be six episodes, so once a week on Monday, like we uh, brought up already. But yeah, June and July, we're already well into editing them together. And June was a very successful month that you'll see. I remember we went 3-0 and with wins at Calgary and at Winnipeg and the shutout uh, sandwiched in between against Edmonton. So very successful month. And then you'll, you'll, also, you'll also see Foursquare in this episode in June. So get into the BC Lions locker room and all, all the fun they had. Even I played that once. That's what you're saying, I, yeah. <laughs> some of the guys were... I'm, I'm, I've got good hand-eye coordination, so I have to angle to get into the main tournament coming up in, in 2024. Um, so yeah, it's uh, a lot of video right now. Uh, again, uh, if you want to read all about uh, the coaches being retained, uh, the schedule, we've broken down the schedule in our announcement. Uh, cool schedule video, right? Yeah, so, had, uh, had to go out to Granville. Shout out to Liam for doing that. This was brilliant. Yeah, yeah. you, you want to see this. Uh, head to all our social channels, BC Lions YouTube, all our content lives. So um, you have to have some fun with uh, your big schedule announcements. Okay, wrapping it up, uh, a new segment we're going to roll out uh, in the new year, but we're going to do it right now. And uh, Nick came up with this. It's great. We're, we're calling this Go For It or Punt. It's kind of like uh, Studs and Duds. That's the Ray and Dregs podcast that does Studs and Duds. Where's that? I think it's TSN. This is yeah. generally done, yeah. Yeah, TSN, Darren Dreger, Ray Ferraro, um, pros among and others, cons, pros and cons. Yeah. Okay, so pick, you, you've picked a couple topics here. So yeah, to just explain this, we're going to go for something when we like it and we're going to okay. punt something that we don't like. Okay. And we're going to make this, I want to, I wanted to make this one a little holiday themed. So my go for it for the holidays is going to be eggnog. Okay. And I was late to the party on eggnog. I it just, I think the name of it maybe turned me off a bit, but the last couple of years, especially when you're, when you're of age to have cocktails, I started dabbling with eggnog and adding a little, uh, making it into a cocktail and I, I'm, I'm all over it. In the winter time now, I, I always get a jug of eggnog. Um, I've been already kind of enjoying some, uh, on the evenings and this past couple of weeks getting into the Christmas spirit, but eggnog has been a big thing for me over this year. So with eggnog, I'm going for it. I'm going to say I'm going to, uh, my first instinct is to punt. And I was like you, I, I, until I was an adult, I, yeah. But yeah, it, if something's in it, yeah, I'll drink. <laughs> I like, I, I like the, the feeling of it yeah. too. It's just like a nice little, it kind of has that milk taste to it, but it's, yeah. it's a little creamy. I, li- I like it. Because I, I have to watch my sugar intake, uh, especially um, around the holidays. Okay, I guess I, I guess I have to pick a topic here as well, right? If, if we're having, if we're having fun with this. Um, stuffing. I'm going to, I'm going to 100% go for it. I, Thanksgiving, Christmas, I would just limit it to the turkey and the ham and the potatoes and the gravy, but I'm all about stuffing now. Even our, our Christmas, our Lions holiday party last week. So good. Had a serving of stuffing. I'm like, yeah, man, load this up. Stuffing is one of those foods where I, I, I do like it too, but it's always one of those foods where I'm like, I wish I got more of it. That's it's the one where I'm always like, ah, I didn't get enough of it at the, at the dinner, but I, I love stuffing too. All right, back to you. So we're going to punt now? 
Yeah. So something I'm putting is Secret Santa. I just I, I've never been into Secret Santa. I think it's just it's always um Yeah. The the excitement of it is always like not met in my opinion. It's always kinda of a little underwhelming. There's people getting gifts or people I don't really know. Um a lot of the times you get spoiled who gets the gifts for somebody, so it's not even a secret anymore and I think maybe there's one or two, when you do it, there's maybe one or two good gifts. It's also something else to worry about, but I've just never really enjoyed Secret Santa. I've done it with sports teams in the past and it just, I don't know, there's some, some, a lot of people make jokes of it and get something you don't really want. So that's, a, that's also another aspect to it, but. You're asking yeah. for trouble. Yeah. yeah Secret I mean, Santa, not my I'm thing. with you. I'm punting it. I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, done that a couple of times uh, at a previous company and it, yeah, you just, you do it to play ball, but I'm with you. Um, you know what? I'm absolutely punting because again, as I get older, I mean, you know, as a married guy, it's, it's, you have double the functions, double the duties, boxing day shopping. Oh, Hell yeah. nah. No. I mean, there's, there's enough deals throughout the year now. Um, I don't need to go buy a new TV for, for a hundred dollars less or whatever it is. And on boxing day and, uh, definitely not lining up with strangers, fighting for parking spots. I did all my Christmas shopping this year online. All of it. I think for the first time ever. All of it. So, Boxing Day shopping? Hell nah. Punt that, was, that ball. Punt it. I know we only need a yard to move the chains, but punt it. Play for field <laughs> position. Yeah, that's that. my one, my one caveat I was going to bring up is that if you do it online, that's the only time I would maybe even think about it. But yeah, I'm with you. You can't be going out at like 5 a.m. And, and you know those videos you see in more so in America where there's people like running into the stores like yeah. at Walmart. like Black just, Friday even yeah, too. It, yeah. it makes me laugh how people get that worked up over what, like 50% off a of TV. That's like, that's one of my favorite memes that exploded over the last few years talking about black friday yeah because only in america will people fight each other for a tv one day after being thankful for what they already have right so true yeah i like that let's uh we'll stick with go for it or punt uh throughout here and uh we'll we'll come up with some topics and yeah um all the best to you and you're you're off to winnipeg right to transcona yeah, unfortunately, as some would say, maybe Mo <laughs> Moj would say I'm, he's giving me his uh his good riddance to Winnipeg. But um, I think he's there right now. Moj. Winnipeg? No, no, oh. no. <laughs> yeah, he Moj. loves going there. Yeah, yeah. It's his favorite city. He, I th yeah, we we didn't get his favorite city, but I think Winnipeg would be his one. I'll speak for him on that. But so, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I am off to Winnipeg, so uh, we'll be taking a bit of a hiatus here uh, for the podcast, but. You got, what do you got planned? A couple Jets games or? I mean, the Bruins are there on a Friday night when we go. So I think me and my buddies have that one lined up. But other than that, more, more so hanging out with the family, hanging out with the dog, not taking Willow. it easy. Yeah, going for walks in the snow, hoping it's not too cold, uh, dealing with all of that. But excited for it. Awesome. Well, uh, enjoy it. Uh, you've earned it. And um, back for 2024. And yeah, our time to remind you. Uh, the 41st and final episode of this year. We'll be back uh, probably in the middle of January. I'm probably going to lay low uh, for a couple of weeks after the new year. Safe just, house. Yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. Try to get, try to stay out of trouble and be healthy and, and all that stuff. So 2024, where has the time gone? Season number 70 for the BC Lions is just around the corner. Be sure to subscribe, rate, leave a review. Uh, first and now, uh, we're thankful to you, the listener, and we'll be back and even better this coming year. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and just do us a favor. Be safe. <laughs>